Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Uh, this particular build we're going to be doing is the uh, 170 second scale Liberator Mark VI. Now, this is a Eddard rebox of the old Academy kit. Now, as you can imagine, the kit itself is a little bit old, but what we do get is some very nice recessed panel lines in the kit. So let's have a quick look in here. <clears throat> so actually when we look at these panel lines and things like that in here they are all recessed as we were saying some quite nice detail in there some of them admittedly you go along and they just sort of stop okay so they're going to need to be rescribed and just tidy up just a little bit there's no massive detail to the actual kit itself um, and some of the bits are a little bit chunky certainly these uh, bomb racks and things like that but what we're hoping to do is with the use of the photo etch parts which are in here we've got photo etch parts here now this covers obviously we've got things for the engine side panels cockpit flooring wheel wells brake lines all the usual bits you can imagine so that's quite a nice touch and the other thing as well just down here we've got color uh, ones as well so we've got harnesses as well which is a nice little touch things like the steering yokes um, as I said when you're in plastic they're always heavily and overdone on that so having them in photo etch is a really nice touch obviously instrument panels and things like that so it's just a nice little touch to do that it should add a real quality to the the detail detail to it. Uh, we've got the decals as well, some very nice ones here with certainly some of the nicer nose art and things like that as well. So it should really make uh, for a very nice interesting kit straight out of the box by just using these extra parts. The other thing as well is quite handy when you're dealing with bombers and all glass around the front and things like that, you've actually got here all the mask sets for them as well, the wheels, the glass work and things like that. One thing I will mention just about the kit. Uh, when you go through in the bag you get both types of nose for this so this one has got the actual the nose turret the movable turret uh, in the kit but also you can probably see on this sprue here this is the one for the turret at the other end you've got the flat nose one as well for the different marks of liberator so say you can have it with a turret or you can have it with just the glass front uh, with a 50 caliber out the front like that so quite a nice touch to have those get in there so we'll get all this cleared away get ourselves set up and get on with some building Okay, so we've removed uh, a lot of the parts from the sprue for the initial area. So we've got the cockpit, uh, the front thing. Uh, the thing that you know, stands out immediately is we've got lots and lots of ejector pin marks uh, to sort of get rid of. You can probably see on this one down here. So some of these we will see from the inside. Some of them obviously are not. And it's a bit tricky until we sort of get it together. So what I'm doing is I'm just going round and just polishing out some of them to get rid of them a little bit because... Just say there's just too much of it going on so you can just sort of chip it away and in the awkward areas with a mini drill or you can come along with the sanding sticks and we just sand them out very straightforward like that now the thing is as I say I've gone around I've been doing them all over the actual model itself just bring the camera up a bit Oops, there we go <clears throat> Been going around and doing them on the model itself everywhere uh, because say they are quite frequent the other thing as well you notice with the plastic it's very hard and crisp um, more like sort of the Hasegawa kits of the world and things like that the trouble with that is it can crack very easily so when you're pushing down on it and sanding just be a little bit careful on how you're actually doing it same thing as well whilst I've had these parts out flat I've also gone along and uh, certainly some of the actual uh, these parts are a little bit shall we say um, patchy on some of the, the panelling as it goes along so it sort of goes around there's one just down here by this tail uh, and it just sort of well it peters out really so what we're doing popping it in a new panel line to where they miss whilst it's flat like this it's really easy to do but remember we're saying be careful you don't crack this plastic because it is very very easy to crack and then certainly we can just take out these tabs where we cut them off but say just take your time with it because it is quite easy to overdo this area and end up breaking it uh, especially areas down here because it is extremely fragile okay so what we're going to do for the moment just going to pop along rescribe any panel lines on this fuselage and then this front half as well i'm going around and i'm going to clean up and get rid of all the ejector pin marks on all these small cockpit bits and pieces just like this and then that way what we can do we can get it sort of you know primed up and ready 
and then we can work on some of these photo etch parts and as soon as you've got the photo etch parts in there then obviously we can go around and start getting some paint and detailing it up so so i'm going to spend a little bit of time now just getting rid of all the ejector pin marks some of the good examples on this bulkhead as well it has got lots of ejector pin marks i've done the one down there but you've got another one up here 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 and obviously down the back here so i want to get those all done and out of the way and it's a long sort of boring job Okay, so one of the biggest um, things with the actual kit is getting a good seam join between the front. So obviously it's got interchangeable noses the way that the kit's actually done. So consequently, you know, obviously we can have the one with a flat. <clears throat> so this is always the problem that normally you come along and the instructions say put the two halves together, then bolt it on the front. The trouble with that is if it's any type of it's too close, too wide, something like that, your joins are going to be right down these large areas. And the thing is, with this type of aircraft, they're very flat sided, it's going to be very, very noticeable. So the easiest way to get around that is to put them together first. Now, just in testing, what we tend to do is just line it up next to each other like this, see how it actually is. And there is a small gap down here and things like that. So automatically you think, right, we're going to have a few problems here. So the way that I do it is literally come in line the two up on the flat surface roughly okay now this is just a rough type of join okay and we can see make sure the panel lines are joining up and everything else like that okay and which they are so say so make sure you just all it's all flat and everything else okay and it's not a brilliant fit on this side at all the other side to be honest we've done earlier was a little bit better but what we're going to do is take some liquid cement not much of it and we're just going to run it in just for the minute and just get it to start to bite in that initial area okay now depending obviously on the glue you're using will depend on how long it's going to take to start to dry so we just hold it there and just get it going just a little bit okay now i've got it going just a little bit what we can do is flip it over we're going to put a drop of super glue just down on this seam okay give it a squirt with some kicker to get it going now over to the other side we're just gonna touch bend it out at the top a little bit whoops that's not exactly what we wanted to happen what we can do is just hold it as that is setting okay now the super glue is set on the inside which gives us a better join on the outside now to be honest we've already done this one earlier and if we bring you in a little bit you can see this join is pretty much not noticeable we've got a little bit on the inside we might have to sand down to get the interior in but as you can see that now is so much better so you can say right okay well we'll let that go just for the moment just to see how it is uh, and then come back and sand it or you can do it right now so what you could do is say right okay i'm going to take a very small amount of we just get some Tamiya tape down. Let me just grab this out of the way. <clears throat> just down like this, out of the way. We're going to put a blob of super glue down. Okay, we're going to take a cocktail stick. And what we can do is just pop it in there. We're just going to run it down the outside of the seam and just rub it each side of the actual seam itself okay it's got a small gap at the bottom here just in like that okay squirt with kicker on the top dry all that off which won't take very long at all Okay, so then what you can do, you come along with your sanding sticks and we can just blend them in just a little bit. And if you do it as the super glue sort of goes off, because what happens is the dust from it will then stick back into the gaps if you've got any. Just make our way right the way over. At the bottom. Let's say we're not carving deeply into this. So that one's in, okay, and then we can come on with a sanding sponge. 
Okay, if we use a thin one, so that way we're not causing too much damage to everywhere else, we can keep it quite local without having to mask out because we don't want to obliterate the panel line. So if we just use a skinny stick to get in there, just across, we've got a small little raised bit just down the back here. So we just come in with a fine sanding stick, take a little bit more off of that. run over and that way we can feel exactly what we've got because the super glue is always going to be harder than the plastic around it so you can end up sanding down and through it just over like that and we just do a, a bit of a rough job just to show you but we just sand that all in okay then we'll just give a quick polish up Get rid of the scratching. You see, I can got my fingers each side down the back just to share the weight because they said this plastic is quite fragile and I don't want it to crack and things. So just then polish it up <clears throat> and there we go. One join in, all done. It's got a little line down there. Okay, so what we can do now is obviously paint the inside with no problem. Just sand that down a little bit just to blend it in. But this outside's absolutely fine. So if you wanted to now, pop some acrylic paint down on it to see if you've got any shrinkage marks, things like that. But if you're happy with it, what you can actually do then is rescribe this along. If you use a needle vise to do it, I'll show you in a moment, uh, in a, a needle in a vise. That way you won't end up digging too deep in the plastic and harder on there. But we'll show you all that later. So that's a quick filler job and got that nose on. So then hopefully both of these will come together now once the other side's done as well we'll just pop in like this okay and then obviously we've just got the seam line right down the bottom but it gives you an idea of how it will sort of look when we got these top halves all together and everything else like that okay so we've got plenty going on at the moment and so we've done that joint and we put a little bit of acrylic paint on here like that then what we can do is we can just lightly buff this off the acrylic paint to see how it's looking underneath okay now the thing is um people often say to me why use you know, acrylic paint you can use any type of a paint it's just acrylic paint dries quicker and it's easier to sand okay so what we do we just go right the way over now the thing is don't think uh, about wetting the sponge to sand it off. Thing is, if you wet the sponge to sand it off, what happens is, is that you end up artificially, because it sort of drags it out. So you want to lightly sand, and that way you can come along and see exactly what you've got. So we've got this little mark just down here in the middle area. Obviously that might need a little bit of filling, a bit of gap filling something like that in there or perhaps you might be able to get away with it but certainly all the others as you can see it's really blended in you can't really see a line going diagonally down so if we just sand the rest of this back just like so okay so there we go that's the shows it in there and obviously the join is actually this line running diagonally down okay so then what we can do is we can come along with a polishing sponge okay just to give this a bit better finish to see how it is but there we go that's that join taken care of and it's a, a nice join now we can come along as we said we'll rescribe this we'll do it when it's all together to be honest but it takes out that's one of the major problems with all kits when you have um, interchangeable fronts shall we say now the next thing is obviously we've gone along and we've got all these little parts we were talking about for the bulk heads to go in there and everything else by taking out the ejector pin marks the thing also is is that obviously we've got this photo etch fret now the photo etch fret itself makes up some nice little details especially around the cockpit area and things like that but the trouble with it is is that it's not been painted so you've got two things you can either paint the entire inside okay spray it up everything else like that then you've got to come along with this photo etch and put it down on top and then obviously you'll end up painting it again so what I tend to do is do it all as one 
like so. And then what you can do, get a hold of the photo which, and then once you've got it all as one, just out of shot, I've got a bit of super glue just down on a, a bit of paper. Okay, but then as I say, we can pop this on as we're going to do here. I'll show you in a minute, and then we can paint it all as a whole afterwards. Okay, so this one here is the side of the pilot and co-pilot's instrument panel on for their side. So this one is going to, we just line it up in there. And then what we're going to do, we'll place it down on the, because there's a curb to this, down on there. And then literally we're just going to push this on the side and just hold it for a second make sure you put it down because if you don't you might end up bruising the sort of the plastic and all the rest of it but it's onto a hard surface so it was down and just the super glue now will dry all around the area you can give it a squirt of kicker if you wanted to to speed it up but in all honesty it shouldn't take too long because it's quite a, a thin area and then once we're on you can see it's installed nicely into there just like that but as I said it's still a little bit flat and when you look at the instructions it says about a building various boxes and things that go on it now with photo etch parts these little guys are absolutely great these are tammy up bending pliers okay the great thing is there's no serration on this edge okay the other thing as well when you look at the angles of them they're actually angled at 45 degrees so if you bend your part down you'll get a 90 degree bend if you bend it right the way over at 45 and so on so what we do with these, we've got a little part here, this is going to make a little box, so we just literally pop the pliers on the side, twist it right the way over, and on the other side, all the way over. Now because of the way it is with these, we can just push these ends down, flat, making our box, and that gives us a nice little box shape, just like that. And then what happens with that? That's going to come along, take a tiny bit more super glue, just in this hole in the side here, just like that. Okay, then what you can do is just sometimes I pick these up, other times it's a little bit more of a fuss. But it comes along and it's going to fit just in that hole, just in the side like so okay so that goes in there just like that okay so very nicely done pretty straightforward and what there is there's lots of other ones that go on there and this one here we've done a few more to them so as you can see we've got some little map areas in there and everything else all very nice okay now the other thing as well we've got color photo etch to go on the top of some of these as well so consequently we're going to paint it all as a whole then come back with a colored photo etch and put it all together the same goes with we've got here the seats and everything else we've got those installed the pedestal is in things like that but we're going to spray it all green then the instrument panel will go in on the top uh, tell you the truth, this is the instrument panel that's going to sit just in here. And we can put that in now. So we just grab a little bit of glue, just down on the back. Okay, because as I say, there again, we've got bits to go on there to go through. So what we're trying to do, if you like, is get all the bits done glue it all in as far as we can so we can paint all of this green we're going to do some nice weathering um, and change the tone wall and break it up and everything else so we can get all of these parts installed into the kit spray it green change the tone weather it up then we can go along with those colored photo edge parts afterwards and put them all in just like that and then obviously we can put glazing in uh, as we go and all the little tiny bits and pieces that go in before we seal it up so that's the thing so what i'm going to do now i'm going to work through do all this photo edge bits and pieces come together at the end before we do the paintwork and everything else and we can move on from there. Now we've been around and we've finished um, putting in the photo etch. There is some more to go in, as I said, some more coloured work. But you can probably see we've done the ones down the rear here. We've got the ones at the front. Same on the other side as well. Also with this one, what we've done is we put some bulkheads in as well, just to really sort of bring it together. And it just makes it easier for painting. Now if we just put that one out of the way, because that's got a little something on it I'll explain later. But what we want to do now, now we've done the majority of it, we can actually move forward and then spray it up. So what we're going to do is make quite a rough job uh, of actually spraying this. 
bit of paint dried in the needle there. So we just open this up for just a second. So reseat. That's better. Reseat the needle. Okay, so the entire inside of this particular one is going to be uh, interior green. So we use the extra acrylics one here. Just a tiny bit of thinners on there. So what we're going to do is spray this inside area green with the interior green. Now we're going to spray this neat, okay, which I know is not to everyone's liking. But the thing is, by spraying it neat, it gives good texture, good coverage, dries very quickly. So we're just going to go over this. For the moment, just lightly go around. That's one half. Go work our way around everywhere. So we're not worried about that join in the middle at the moment. And some of us are probably going to have to go around and touch in afterwards. And there we go, that one goes in like that. Okay, then we'll go down the other end here. Special attention in the more detailed areas. So now that's covered that very nicely, we can just top this up again. Okay, and then we can do exactly the same, finding somewhere to hold it for this cockpit. Getting in it from all the angles, everything else like that. Now remember to paint the underside. A little bit of a build up on the needle. Let's clean that off. A little bit of uh, remember to paint it just from the underside because we have the crew access door open underneath. And what will happen is this cockpit itself will really come to life once we can get that coloured photo etch on this. Okay, so that's all around there. So we just hold a section here. So we haven't installed this front area purely because we need to get in there to do that. So we can pop that down, okay, and then what we'll do is just do the same in here as well. Just turn the old compressor air pressure up just a little bit. as well and then in this Bombay area now the Bombay area depending on your references some of them quite clearly say they're silver in there some say they're black and some say that they're green so it's a little bit of uh, take the choice of what it is obviously a lot of these aircraft are sort of specific to what they're doing for the moment I'm going to do it green because then we can always change our mind at a later date So quite a, a rough job back here. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is Okay, so that's that done, and then what we're going to do, just making sure we've gone around everywhere, and it's all nice solid colours, 
then what we're going to do, we're going to do this sort of a two-fold thing. So to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of grey to this. I've got a little bit of slight grey here. So I'll just use the little brush. We're just going to pull a little bit of grey out, put it into our mix, a bit of thinners, get it all mixing up and going nicely. Okay, this what this will do obviously it will fade the paint. Okay, so we just take that off there. All we're going to do is just randomly blow this through. It's a bit lumpy because it's so thick. It'll take a bit just to get coming through. Here it comes. Okay, then all we're going to do is use sort of up and down movements and just blow this in. What it'll do is just lighten up and stripe up. If you've missed anywhere, we'll put a giant drip in, like I did like that. You can just fill it in now. And then what we're doing, we're just going to pop around a few little areas, perhaps around here, inch panels, around, just around a couple of the areas like that. And we do the same on the other one, exactly the same type of thing. Okay, just like so. And then to that, all we're going to do is add a little bit of black. Same thing. So we're just reversing it, if you like. Okay, so we we'll put some black in there to really darken it up. Out the way. Same thing. Blow that through until we can see it coming through. Here it comes, coming through quite nicely. Okay, and then if we just dry this off, just cut into air, just drying down a little bit. Let's say we have got that drip on that wing joint, but we'll leave that. Then all we're going to do is get in there quite close. And we're just going to add some squiggles and swirls just to break it all up in there just a little bit. Stop it looking so sort of universal. and then with this cockpit exactly the same thing it's a little bit wet and obviously we've got some colors to go on here photo etch so we have to be a little bit careful how we produce the touch around the seats and the floor areas things like that underneath here and there we go and all we do is sort of just darken it up a little bit but what it will do it just again breaking up the colour and that's what we're trying to do with the hobby itself if you can break up the colour like now it makes it look a lot more interesting because it's different tones and shades and various things like that and it just will make things look a lot more realistic when you bring it together now the other thing uh, we just done we just clear this out of the way little tip here we've got down here is obviously you can see all the panel lines and everything done in there. All we did, a little bit of black acrylic paint, put it on, rub it around my finger, let it dry, and then just smooth it off and wipe it away, leaves you in. That way I could go around and I rescribed in the panel lines because obviously we lost uh, quite a few in this joint. So what we've done, we've put a nice long one back in there now, one's coming across and everything else. By doing it this way, you can see how the panel lines will look and to see if they're in scale with the others around it. Because there's nothing worse when you've got a really deep panel line perhaps going down here that you've replaced or these that you fixed and the rest of them are quite fine because they stand out doing it this way you can see exactly what you've got at the end of the day so if it is too much you can just put some more filler in it and rescribe it again and things like that but that's that one done so it shows that so what we're going to do let that all dry off nicely clean out the airbrush and things like that and then we get some of this nice colored photo etching 